In this Baldur's Gate 3 video, we're going to talk about the most underrated things that are deceptively better than you might think with a ton more functionality and applications than you might suspect or just way stronger than you might estimate at first glance. Coming in at number one, we have Backpack. Now the backpack might seem like it's just an item to store and organize items, but you can also throw your backpack, which deals light damage, but more importantly, if you throw it far enough, it breaks open and drops everything that was inside where you threw it. Now when you throw a backpack filled with explosive items like alchemist's fire, smoke powder bombs, caustic bulbs, and spiked bulbs, and so on, you can create a massive bomb that you can set off with an arrow, a fire, or other flame source. Now this backpack bomb might just be the single highest amount of damage you can do in a single turn in Baldur's Gate 3. I highly recommend you give that a try. Coming in at number two, we have light. Now this is actually kind of interesting. You can use the light spell on an item to make it glow and emit light. And then you can then throw that item into a dark place to create a light source. Now this can be done on low value items to create light sources cheaply, something like a knife or a fork. You can also put it on a chest and if you can throw that, then that's actually going to be quite a large light source as well. This can be particularly helpful in dark places like the Underdark, Cave, anywhere where you know you might need the extra light to assist a ranged character that might not have dark vision, right, that allows them to see in the dark, to help those ranged attacks connect with their targets. So a hidden use there that you can really help out your ranged characters. Coming in at number three, we have Find Familiar. Cats can jump through bars and go through some small places. So you can get your familiar to reach places that you might not be able to otherwise. Also, if you're a druid, you can shapeshift into a cat and then turn back into a human once you're past that obstacle. And you can also then take advantage of going through bars as a druid. Not only that, but if you summon a spider familiar in particular, you can actually use this to scare goblins and trolls, which are both terrified of them. So it could serve as an opportunity to distract your enemy or to get an edge on them. The cat familiar is great for distracting enemies to get them out of position. You can meow and then they'll all kind of gather them up, similar to Minor Illusion, if you want to get ready for an AoE. What's also great about familiars is that they persist through a long rest. So if you summon them before a long rest, you'll get your spell slot back, and then after you do your rest, you're going to be keeping your familiar. So nice little trick there as well. All right, coming in at number four, we have Send to Camp. You can actually send chests to camp after looting them, even if they're lockpicked, and then you can crack that later if you can't figure it out now. Maybe your skill is too low, so you want to save it till you're better at it or maybe at camp you have your uh, sleight of hand gloves and so you equip those and then open the chest at camp. So if you're in a tight situation, you don't have time to crack open a chest right now, you can just send it straight to camp and deal with that later. You can also do the same thing with camp supplies. So, you know, those can really clutter up your inventory. You know, maybe there's like a bunch of chickens and food, eggs, whatever. You can just send that straight to camp so that you have more room in your inventory. You're able to carry more stuff. And that actually goes straight to your traveler's chest. Now, as a bonus, if you put a camp supplies backpack inside of your traveler's chest, the supplies you send to camp will actually automatically go into that bag, which actually saves you a ton of room both in your character's bags by sending it to camp, but also really helps keep your traveler's chest from getting cluttered as everything's just going to go straight into that camp supplies backpack. I found that tip to be very helpful to really just keep myself organized as I'm going throughout the world. All right, tip number five, we have Mage Hand. This spell should have been in my top underrated spells list video, but since I didn't add it there, it's going into this list. Now, Mage Hand has a ton of amazing uses. You can cast it before a fight, drop some bombs next to it, and then when the fight starts, you can just throw and throw and throw, rain down explosives on your enemies each turn, or you can summon a Mage Hand next to a ranged attacker that might be standing on a cliff, and then shove him off to his death, or at least get rid of that high ground advantage he has. So Mage Hand actually has a ton of uses. You can do so much with it. It just absolutely high, highly recommend. I didn't actually know how good Mage Hand was until I... I realized all these amazing things. Coming in at number six, we have Silence. Now this is another underrated spell. This spell is most commonly used to stop enemy spell casting. However, it can also be used to mute any sounds in the environment that might wake up or alert nearby enemies. For example, using Silence on an area you're about to cause an explosion on, or perhaps attack or make noise in any way, right? And it will not wake up any sleeping enemies because it didn't make any sound. Not only that, but everything within the silence 
silence radius is also immune to thunder damage. So there's actually a lot of extra cool uses for silence outside of just stopping enemy spell casting that could come in handy during your adventures. All right, number seven, we have healing potion. Now, most players are using healing potions for sure. Maybe they're just using them, right? But actually, if you throw them, it can heal in an area of effect. Now, this can be extremely useful if your party is grouped up. You can essentially multiply the value of your healing potion by throwing it between them. Make sure not to throw it directly at a teammate, though, because that's going to actually cause damage to them instead. Also, if you're a life cleric and you throw them, you're going to grant bonus healing on the potion, so you'll be able to get a massive AoE heal off on your party if you use this tactic, which is basically the same as using a short rest in terms of healing for your whole group. So it's really, really strong, and you really squeeze the value out of those healing potions. And what's amazing about this is you can actually do the same thing with other potions, such as potion of speed. But I've noticed that it doesn't work for every single potion. So be careful. Make sure to quick save before you throw your potion on the ground, just in case you're not sure if a certain potion is going to work. Knowing this can be very helpful to buff up your team right before a difficult fight to increase your chances of coming out ahead. All right, number eight, we have crate. If you stack three crates on top of each other, you can actually give your character the high ground advantage. You're basically a crate mancer. What you do is you carry around three crates at all times, and then you kind of set up before the fight, you know, stack your crates up. You know, it might take a few seconds of preparation to stack your crates, but once you're set up, you've given yourself a nice advantage. It basically serves as a way to protect that same character from ranged attacks by giving the enemy that low ground uh, disadvantage, and then you have the high ground Anakin, so you're going to have a much better chance at coming out ahead, especially if you're a ranged fighter, once you get your crates set up. All right, number nine, we have dip. You can dip your weapon into different surfaces to enhance your item. I'm sure you know that one. Puddles of acid, puddles of fire can give your weapon those properties when dipped, but you can also dip from characters that already have that ailment. For example, if Karlak is on fire, you can actually just dip your weapons into her and she's going to give you that fire on your weapon. You can also dip on enemies who are on fire, uh, not only allies and even your own character. You can actually dip fire off of yourself uh, to get fire onto your weapon. So a lot of different uses for dip. You might not think, well, you know, oh man, you know, I didn't know I could use dip on myself <laughs> while I'm on fire, but you actually can. And then coming in at number 10, very similar, we have candle. If you carry a candle around with you, well, you will actually always have a source of fire to dip into. You can just drop the candle on the ground, light it, and then you can dip your weapon into it. You can also use a torch for the same effect as well, but uh, I like carrying a candle. I think that's hilarious that it's basically a constant source of fire for you whenever you want to dip into it. Number 11 is shove. Shove is probably one of the most OP things on this list. For example, if an ally has been put to sleep, you can use shove to wake them up, which is really strong because shove is a bonus attack and help is an action. So using shove allows you to save yourself one action. Shove can also be used to break opponent's concentration, which can be very helpful against control spells like Tasha's hideous laughter. And of course, if you shove an enemy off of a massive cliff into a chasm, this can instantly kill them. Now you might not get the loot from them, but it can be used to perhaps save your life or win a fight you might not otherwise should have won. And you can even use this on some bosses, which makes shove very overpowered in my book. All right, number 12, we have Iron Hinge. You can shoot the chain called Iron Hinge, which is holding up a hanging fire pit slash chandelier, kind of old school, which when it falls, will actually cause an explosion dealing damage and will leave a fire surface. If you toggle your view hitting O, you can actually see exactly where it's going to fall. So you can line it up perfectly with an enemy to kind of get this bonus damage on your enemy. And I think that's kind of a cool thing to pull off, right? Something you'd see in the movies, shoot an arrow at the chandelier, it falls near your enemies. I think it's kind of a cool thing to pull off. And then finally, at number 13, we have Featherfall. This ritual spell causes you and nearby allies to become immune to falling damage. This is actually very useful against being shoved off of high places like we talked about, you know, where you'd either instantly die or perhaps take a massive amount of falling damage. You can actually save yourself from taking any damage actually by becoming immune to falling damage. You can use this before combat and, um, and, and even outside of combat, you can use this when you're trying to traverse difficult terrain. Perhaps you want to make a jump down that would otherwise kill you. Since Featherfall, you're immune to falling damage. You can make some crazy jumps and get around much easier. So next time you find a scroll of Featherfall, you might find it more useful than you think, allowing your whole party to become immune to falling damage. And that's my list of 13 things that are actually overpowered in Baldur's Gate 3. Let me know. Did I forget anything that you think is overpowered? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.